And welcome to Fox News Sunday Panel Plus with Bill Crystal, Charles Lane, Liz Cheney, and Mara Lyason. And we're going to talk about what we talked about the first half uh, of the program with our guests, and that is the, the impact of this week's votes, the Wisconsin recall election, in which Wisconsin, uh, Governor Walker was able to beat it back. And also the very interesting vote in San Diego and San Jose, California, where voters by overwhelming margins in San Jose, 70 percent voted to cut government pensions because services are being so uh, squeezed there. Uh, significance, watershed, what do you think is the message, Bill? I think significant. You can always go wrong trying to generalize from, you know, special elections and local elections. But look, the big question for 2012, one simple way to think about it is, is this going to be more like 2008 when President Obama and the Democrats won by seven points nationally or 2010 when the Republicans won by about seven points nationally? And Wisconsin look, 2012 looks an awful lot like Wisconsin 2010. Walker actually increased his vote by a point. And I do think San Jose and San Diego suggest that the spirit of the Tea Party in the sense of the problem is big gov too, government that's too big, public sector pensions that have been improvidently granted by public officials, and that needs to be curbed, that that spirit is alive and well in 2012. You know, uh, I, I did a lot of research for this show, and I learned a lot of things that I didn't know. San Jose is such an interesting case. Democratic mayor. But he supported this voter initiative, and it won, as I said, with 70 percent of the vote, Charles. And, and one of the reasons it did, and this was to cut back on the government worker pensions, they had fire stations. They had to do a rotation on the fire station. They couldn't keep them all open all the time because they didn't have the money. They had built four brand new libraries, and they couldn't open them because they didn't have the money. So you can understand where voters, a lot of whom don't have nearly as generous or any pensions or health care plans, are sitting there saying, and we're going to pay our taxes to them when we can't have our libraries open? You know, uh, this has been an issue for a long time, but the events in Wisconsin and California this week are the first time they've ever crystallized in the form of real votes in real elections that really counted for something. And that's why it, it gives such a strong signal, because you kind of can't deny these results. And as you point out, I think one of the very interesting consequences that deserves more attention is the division within the Democratic Party that this starts to develop, where you have office holders like that mayor you mentioned who just have to pay the bills, you know, and they're worried about that, coming into conflict with the unions who are the basis Jerry of Brown, the party. Jerry Brown, the governor of California. Yes, but he's been very ineffective in, in that. But, I mean, he's also he's, for that. Yes. Andrew Cuomo has tried to play it within the party. And, you know, this plays out in many ways, the divisions within the party about how much the president should have helped, how much he did help, et cetera. Was it a good idea to go down this road? In other words, I think some Democrats are starting to reconsider this pact, this alliance with the public sector unions. It's quite unclear how that reconsideration will wind up, but I think it's begun. It's not just, Liz, a division within the Democratic Party. It's also a division within the union movement. I mean, we saw those exit polls in Wisconsin, which showed in union households, either you're a member of the union or your spouse or somebody in your family is a member of the union, more than a third of the voters went for Walker. And I, you, you got to figure a lot of them are saying, wait a minute, I don't get these benefits. And then I have to pay taxes, which allow the government workers to get benefits I don't have. Right. And I think that that uh, division is is dangerous for the unions. I think the other thing that's dangerous for the success and the future of the unions is something Charles Krauthammer wrote about this week, which is that uh, in Indiana, for example, where uh, Governor Daniels ended the mandatory, the government itself taking the dues out of the union members' paychecks, the union, public sector union has lost 90 percent of its membership. Uh, in Wisconsin, you've seen 50 percent uh, of the AFSCME union membership gone uh, now that people are given a choice. The other thing that I think is key here for the unions is, you know, as Republicans, we have for a long time looked on these unions in awe of their political skill and their political organization and their grassroots efforts. And Wisconsin showed that we can, as Republicans, in fact, overcome that. So I think there you've got Wisconsin as, as you know, uh, sort of uh, Carl Rove has called it a call to action. But it shows what's got to be done in November in terms of doing more than just telling people to get to the polls, but really getting out at a grassroots level, um, you know, knocking on doors, driving people to the polls, making the phone calls. Yeah, but let me ask you about that uh, before I, I, I bring in Mara, because at least the perception is, now Wisconsin's a special case, obviously, is so mobilized. The perception is that the Obama team has a much better field ground game 
than the Romney team does, at least so far. They've been building it for two years. Yeah, it's interesting. It's sort of the conventional wisdom. But, you know, the conventional wisdom has also been that the Obama team, you know, finance operation is more effective. And Governor Romney showed this last month that he was able to outraise them. So I think it's not a bad place for Republicans to be to make sure that we understand what a formidable machine this is we're going to face. But what Wisconsin shows is a path forward, a way to victory for the Republicans. Mara. No doubt, huge victory for Republicans, but don't forget, Scott Walker outspent his opponent by seven to one, and the vast majority of his money came from out of state in big, unlimited contributions. That's a structural advantage that Republicans have this year all over the country because of Citizens United. Just to pick up on Charles' point, I don't think the Democrats are rethinking their alliance with the public sector unions. The public sector unions are pretty much all they've got now, now that you've got corporations being able to fund Republicans, you know, in, in these huge amounts. What they are rethinking is the actual fiscal drag on, on, on the country and municipalities. That's what's happening. In Wisconsin, the public sector union said, we'll give you the, the fiscal give back. We'll, we'll take the hit. We just want our collective bargaining rights to be maintained. That's where the real power struggle is about. If you do in Indiana, as Mitch Daniels did, and uh, get rid of collective bargaining rights and paycheck deductions, as Liz just mentioned, what's the point of joining a public sector union? You're going to shrivel out the biggest opponent that Republicans have had, uh, the biggest counterweight that the Democrats have relied on. I think this is kind of a fundamental recalibration of political power. Public sector unions are going to wither just like the private sector unions have over many, many years. And I think this is a you know, a harbinger of things to come. Republicans have a lot of structural advantages now. You want to make one final comment? Well, just, I think Democratic governors like Cuomo and Governor Brown, uh, Governor Cuomo in New York, Governor Brown in California are rethinking, Democratic mayors are rethinking. Bargaining rights. No, no, but they're rethinking the whole question of how to restructure the public. And everyone should. And who isn't rethinking? Yes. Barack Obama. I mean, that is what was striking about the press conference on Friday and and the radio address. I mean, if Bill Clinton were president, I think he would have associated himself with the mayor of San Jose. And I, unless I missed something, did Barack Obama place a congratulatory phone call to, to the mayor of San Jose as a Democrat and say, hey, way to go to really make a sensible reform at the local level? So I think it is a problem for President Obama that he is not, he isn't really, and he's not presenting himself as a kind of new Democrat. All right, I'm being very laissez-faire. Go ahead, quickly. <laughs> well, just quickly, I, I mean, there has been a lot of talk about the secular shift toward Democrats through demography, the rising Hispanic population, et cetera. Mara puts her finger on the one thing Republicans could do to sort of shove the balance the other way, which is to erode this public sector union base. All right. We're going to leave it there. Thank you all. Uh, please let us know what you think uh, about the, the significance of Wisconsin, both in terms of what happened this week and what it means for the strength of the two parties going forward towards November. Check in with us throughout the week. Look for my Monday edition of Wallace Unplugged, which you can find right here at foxnewssunday.com. And we'll see you back here next Sunday.